Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our rule and guide we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was as graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you for seven years for, for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is complete. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy are they all who fear the Lord and who follow in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of your labor. Happiness and prosperity shall be yours. 
Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children like olive shoots round about your table. The man who fears the Lord shall thus indeed be blessed. The Lord bless you from Zion. And may you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. May peace be upon Israel. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in the field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding one pearl of great value, he went, sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore and sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. 
the angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all of this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. All things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. 2020, you heard about this little piece of scripture and said, hold my beer. There is no doubt this has been a trying year. A quick search through news stories reveals that there have been murder hornets, transcontinental dust storms, locusts, Famine caused by the locusts, frogs literally hopping out of drains in England, and toxic toads have invaded Florida. Historic hailstorms with tennis ball sized hail, deep enough to plow it in Virginia, and the River Nile has turned to blood. Okay, so the Nile has not turned to blood, but there have been lakes around the world that have oddly turned red as if they were turned into blood. Oh, and let's not forget about the little global COVID-19 pandemic that's called so much disruption. It's almost like we are living in biblical times with the plagues of Exodus. Now, to be fair, by my count, only seven of the ten have happened in 2020. Still, with only seven out of the ten plagues having happened, this has been a hard year with lots of disruptions to our normal lives, it's very likely that the social distancing and disrupted schedules and economic turmoil will continue for some yet unknown period of time. It is likely that uncertainty and anxiety are likely to continue. Yet the word the Lord has for his people is all things work together for the good of those who are called according to his purpose and love God. Amen? Amen. But notice the Lord does not just say nice, comfortable, polite things work together for the good of those who are called according to God's purpose and love Him, but all things, everything works together, even the painful, disruptive things. And to be sure that we don't miss the point, Paul even lists hard, painful things that are actively working together for good. He asks, will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or locust or murder hornets or lakes turning red or the coronavirus or even the very gates of hell itself prevail against those who love God and are called according to his purpose? No, none of these things, nothing can keep us from the love of God. Nothing can keep us from the love of God or prevent him from walking and working and for our blessing and favor if we love him and are working towards the things that he has called us into. Indeed, as the Lord himself has told us, not even the gates of hell can prevail if we love God and are working towards his purpose. 2020 has been a rough year so far. We had all hoped to be together for in-person worship this week. Sitting in your living room, you know that that did not happen. There is disappointment, perhaps frustration. And yet, all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So in the midst of the chaos and hecticness that is 2020, in the midst of having to worship in a way that we're not used to having to worship, and praise God, that will not be too much longer. But in the midst of all of this, Jesus Christ is working these things for your good and for your blessing. So keep saying your prayers, keep reading your scripture, keep being a blessing in other people's lives, keep working on becoming a saint, and bringing people to heaven with you. And know that Jesus is working to bless you, even in the midst of all that's going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Alleluia. Sing with joy to God our strength, and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Alleluia. 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 We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy, Catholic church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Patriarch of Constantinople, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our Presiding Bishop, Andrew, our Bishop, Charles, our Vicar, Chris, our Intern, and all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our President, Henry, our Governor, for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion upon those who suffer any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, and light let perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy, May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Friends, leave your prayer request in the comments. O Lord our God, hear and accept our prayers, fulfilling them not as we in our ignorance ask, but as you in your infinite love and wisdom know our needs. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Walk in love as Jesus Christ has loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice unto God.
Blessed are you, O Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to all for which earth has given and to the hands of men. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to all for fruit divine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The holy sacrifice of the Eucharist is offered to the greater glory of God with thanksgiving for the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, with special intention for the salvation of the world. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for our benefit and that of all His holy church. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us into new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and dark angels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin, become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and ending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament, serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day brings with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him and the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My brothers, my sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and to serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.